Hello everybody, my name is Peter Klapper from the School of Biosciences at the University of Kent and in this video clip I want to introduce to you the famous michaelis menten equation. This is the fundamental equation when we deal with enzymes. I know a lot of people don't like numbers, don't like equations, but this equation is really good because it allows us to compare enzymes uh, with each other. We don't just simply want to say this is a good enzyme, this is a bad enzyme. We want to make a little bit more quantitative uh, statements about different enzymes. So, uh, some very clever people, namely Michaelis and Menten, uh, developed this equation to actually describe how an enzyme performs, how fast an enzyme carries out a certain reaction. Let's assume we have a basic scheme for an enzyme reaction. So let's say we have a substrate and we have our enzyme. Now usually this uh, enzyme then binds the substrate at the active site. So we usually write this as a reversible binding. Um, so with this double arrow and it forms an enzyme substrate complex. This is when the substrate has bound to the enzyme. And now what can happen is actually that this enzyme substrate complex dissociates back into substrate and enzyme. So we haven't gained anything. We don't form any product in this case. Or the enzyme substrate complex, something happens to it and now a product is formed and we gain the enzyme back and the enzyme is recycled and can start a, a new cycle. It can bind to the next substrate and can do exactly the same thing. And what we usually do is we indicate these reaction rates, K1, K minus 1, K2, and K minus 2. And ideally what we want to achieve at the end of the day is we want to make a, a statement how fast, how fast can the enzyme convert the substrate the substrate into a product, whatever this product might be. So that is our main aim that we want to achieve. That is, this is the question that we want to address. So Michaelis Menten asked, how is the speed or the activity or the rate, which are very similar things in this case, how is the speed of the enzyme related to the substrate concentration? And what they came up with was the very famous Michaelis Menten equation. Uh, so this Michaelis Menten equation can be written as V. And I will explain what these different things are in a minute, equals V max times the substrate concentration. And I put this into uh, square brackets. This means substrate concentration here, divided by a constant called Km plus the substrate concentration. And this is a very, very important equation. This is the equation on which all of enzymology is really based upon. Now, what those, do these things actually mean? This V here, this means the rate, the activity, the rate of the enzyme. 
the rate of the enzyme, the speed at which this enzyme converts the substrate into product. Now, this S in, uh, in, in a square bracket means the substrate concentration. Substrate concentration. Uh, so we have this twice. Now this V max here, this is a very interesting thing. This is actually, this indicates how fast the enzyme can go when there is loads and loads of substrate. So this tells us the maximum speed, the maximum rate of the enzyme. So this is, if you like, it's almost like driving in a car. This is the speed that at which we are going, say, on the motorway. The max, however, is the maximum speed that the car can go when everything is okay. Km, this one is or is another very interesting thing, and we will see in a minute what this Km actually means. Km indicates, Km actually is a constant. Constant. And this constant is characteristic for each enzyme and each substrate, each substrate. So Km is this constant, and actually it is made up of these K minus 1, K1, K2, and so on and so forth. Uh, but for the time being, we just say this is a constant. And I will explain uh, a little bit later what this actually means, this constant. Now, what we have now is a relationship between our rate here, the rate by which the substrate is used and the product is made, and the substrate concentration. So that's exactly what Michaelis Menten uh, wanted to achieve. In order for this Michaelis Menten equation to work, they had to make a few assumptions, very important assumptions. So here we've got our scheme again substrate plus enzyme form the enzyme substrate complex and then this forms the enzyme again and the product and this michaelis menten equation only works if the concentration of the substrate so the concentration of this substrate here is much much larger than the concentration of the enzyme so this s must be much larger than e Another very important assumption was that there is no product P formed. So we cannot have a product P present. And we will discuss that, why this is, in more detail when we speak about inhibitors. Also, they found that this step going from E plus P, enzyme plus product, into this reaction here going to enzyme substrate complex. So this reverse reaction cannot happen. So in a way, what I want to do is I want to eliminate this here and say all we have left, all we have left here, where's my pen? All we have left really is enzyme substrate going only in one direction. It does not go backwards. We can form an alternative uh, equation, and this is the reversible Michaelis Menten equation, but that is at the moment that's a little bit too complex for us. So 
there is no reverse reaction from product into enzyme substrate. And the other uh, very important assumption was that there's only one substrate. So we cannot have two different substrates in this case. We will see how we can then change this michaelis minton equation when we talk about two substrate reactions. But at the moment, this is what we want to uh, focus on.